Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Scott Nadson. I am the VP of Marketing and Sales from Ensemble Video. Please don't let that title fool you. I've spent over 10 years in higher education environments leveraging media to support teaching and learning. I'm going to be doing most of the heavy lifting today, but I want to make sure you know that I have two panelists here to support me. We have James Jackson, Director of Product Marketing from Wowser Media Systems, and Francesco Scartosi, Director of Sales in the Americas from Matrox. A couple housekeeping items. First, we are recording this webinar, and it will be shared with you after the event. Also, you all have been muted. Please use the GoToWebinar questions area to submit your questions. James, Frank, and my colleague, Casey from Ensemble Video, will be answering your questions throughout the webinar. So first, we want to make sure that you, we let you know the game plan today. First, we'll get introduced to each of the companies on the webinar. My guess is you know at least one of them. We'll then begin to explore the umbrella term lecture capture and, of course, discuss some of the benefits and challenges in regards to lecture capture. Finally, we'll spend the majority of our time answering the question, how can every classroom be equipped with lecture capture? And we'll definitely finish up with a live demo. So let's start with the new kid in class for most of you. Ensemble Video is an online video platform that simplifies video capture, management, and delivery of video anytime over a variety of networks. Ensemble Video is designed to work in concert with a wide range of complementary video technologies such as Matrox Monarch devices and the WOWS streaming engine. WOWS Media System is the recognized gold standard of streaming with more than 19,000 customers in over 170 countries. The WOWS streaming engine provides robust, customizable, and scalable streaming solutions in industries ranging from education to broadcasting. Matrox is a, is a technology and market leader in digital video hardware and software systems. Matrox award-winning technology powers a full range of multi-screen content creation and delivery platforms used by broadcasters, telcos, cable operators, post-production facilities, live event producers, and AV professionals worldwide. Now the first question is, what is lecture capture? We define lecture capture as any technology with the ability to capture lecture content and make it available in digital format, on demand or live, for all your students. I'm sure many of you are familiar with lecture capture as it's an umbrella term that currently encompasses much more than just video capture technologies. Proper lecture capture systems also offer video management capabilities, reliable delivery and playback features, and can be deployed in the cloud, on-premise, or in a hybrid deployment model. So this brings us to our first poll question. Are you currently using a lecture capture system? And when we ask these poll questions, we'll give everyone a couple minutes to answer the poll question. Okay, let's close the poll, and let's take a look at the results. So it looks like a majority, although a small majority, are definitely using lecture capture systems, and of course we have some attendees that are not using lecture capture systems. For those of you that answered yes to the poll question, I think we can agree there are a large number of benefits in regards to lecture capture. In general, we believe lecture capture enhances teaching and learning because students can rec review recorded lecture content when they miss class. The lecture content can be reviewed for exams and quizzes. And content creation is simplified for online courses and actually all courses. And I assume all of you are aware of the rapid growth of online courses. Did you know more than 35 million people have enrolled in online courses in the last four years? That equates to big business and higher education and also introduces several new technology challenges for campus tech professionals. So just a quick add-on to our first poll question. What percentage of your classrooms are equipped with lecture capture tools if you do have lecture capture tools in your classrooms?
and we'll take about 10 to 15 more seconds so you can get your responses in. All right, let's close the poll and let's take a look at the results. As you can see, over 80% of the attendees have 0 to 25% of their classrooms equipped with lecture capture tools. And this is something that's consistent in all our customer base and our prospects. Um, hopefully, we're going to provide a solution today, uh, but you can see that it is very, very difficult to deploy lecture capture tools in a majority of your classrooms. So if you're not using lecture capture system in a majority of your classrooms, what's holding you back? And you got about 15 more seconds to submit your response. Keep in mind you can select one or more of the following responses. All right, let's close the poll and let's take a look at the results. As you can see, the majority of our attendees answered that cost and budget is one of the biggest issues holding them back to deploy lecture capture technologies and tools inside of a classroom. Uh, you're also going to see, and, and this is very consistent uh, from our experience, that there's a lack of management support. And I think that cost and budget issue and lack of management support go hand in hand. Of course, um, we will run into issues like human resources. In some cases, um, schools and colleges might not have enough uh, staff on campus to manage it and deploy it. So uh, thanks for your responses. That's great. We're going to keep moving on here. So we also argue that lecture capture can be very tricky. There's an unlimited amount of recording equipment choices ranging from video cameras, recording appliances, and microphones. Of course, after evaluating hardware, you're going to assess a number of software systems. Then trying to figure out the proper encoding bit rates for your viewers, how much available bandwidth you have as a broadcaster, and then understanding the bandwidth of your viewers just makes the entire process challenging. We also must consider the sheer number of viewing devices from smartphones, tablets, to good old-fashioned computers. Then once you figure all of that out, where do you want to host it all? Your options are in the cloud, on-premise, or in a hybrid hosted deployment. Now as you know, schools and colleges have been taking advantage of lecture capture technologies for several years. And we know that lecture capture te te technologies and services have advanced rapidly over the years, creating an arms race in the lecture capture market, increasing the price and complexity of lecture capture solutions. Unfortunately, these advancements have totally priced out many organizations uh, outside the market. Many more aren't able to fully deploy a lecture capture system throughout all their classrooms, and we just saw that in our poll. And, and we are here to solve this problem today. So how can every classroom be equipped with lecture capture? You need one platform that combines affordable and industrial strength video technologies to produce a simple, powerful and cost-effective lecture capture solution. Ensemble Video's platform is constantly chosen over market leaders because Ensemble Video supports an open media system and several deployment options, allowing you to use integrated tools like the Matrix Monarch LCSs and the Wowza streaming engine. The best part, you don't have to assemble any of this. That's what Ensemble Video does. And this diagram depicts a common lecture capture scenario. Our customers will deploy a number of Matrix Monarch LCS devices throughout their network through our simple web-based application. Those LCS devices will be scheduled and managed by Ensemble Video's lecture capture software called Ensemble Studio. The video recordings from the LCS will then be stored and streamed on Wowza Streaming Engine and published by Ensemble Video to learning management systems, devices, and content management systems. In most cases, our customers barely touch the Wowza software but they do reap all the benefits of the streaming engine through our tight integration. This includes adaptive bitrate streaming, HTML5 playback on many devices, and of course, live streaming. It is important to mention that this solution can be hosted in the cloud, on-premise, or in a hybrid hosted model. 
So before we dig deeper into the solution, what tools does your ideal lecture capture system include? And we're going to close the poll in about 10 to 15 seconds. All right, let's close the poll and share the results. So as you can see, um, we have some really good results here. A lot of people and our attendees looking at recording appliances is a key piece of the puzzle here when you're talking about lecture capture systems, which is great. And so we're going to learn a lot about the Matrix Monarch LCS and the ability to schedule that with Ensemble Studio. Um, we're also going to look at a screen capture tool that's built right into Ensemble Video. That is a key piece of the puzzle. Again, we think uh, and see that many faculty members, uh, whether they're working from an, a home office or their office, want to do personal capture, quick screencasts. Uh, Ensemble Video does support that. And of course, Two of the other key pieces are managing an ever-increasing flow of video content with a video management system, and, and especially in video delivery, and that's where the Wowza streaming engine comes in. So we'll talk more about this, but uh, thank you for your uh, feedback. So now that we dive into our end-to-end -end lecture capture system that makes video capture easy, flexible, and affordable. Our customers pick and choose their video capture devices, whether it is screen capture software, scheduled recording appliances, or mobile capture apps for smartphones and tablets. We want to take a moment to highlight the Matrix Monarch LCS, which first hit the market in the fall of 2016. Since then, it has won several industry awards, and this powerful yet affordable device supports two video inputs and supports dual input recording modes like picture-in-picture -picture and side-by-side -side modes. I will show you how a user or an admin can configure that in Ensemble Video. The educational price for this device is less than $2,400. That is a one-time payment. And again, I will be demonstrating this device in our live demo portion. So once our customers start to use our automated and easy-to-use capture tools, they have to find a way to enable management of this ever-increasing flow of video content. Content is uploaded into logically organized course or professor libraries. Additionally, our customers can enable content security options and access viewer analytics that provide the information and insight they need to successfully manage their video content. And this is an illustration of Ensemble Video's functional framework to organize video and audio content for departments and individuals across your organization. Ensemble Video allows you to define what we call institutions, organizations, and media libraries. Institutions are the head of the snake. You can define branding settings, quotas, identity provider settings such as LDAP, Shibboleth, SAML, or CAS. You can also gain access to the LTI settings for LMS integrations and define the way media is processed across your organizations. Organizations are typically departments, schools, or colleges. As you know, on many campuses, there's a business school, a law school, school of medicine, etc. Ensemble enables you to define these areas and manage the content, users, and course media. As you can see, we have roles for institutional administrators, organizational administrators. For example, this user can manage only the business school users, libraries, and workflows. And finally, we have contributors like professors or faculty members that can manage their individual course libraries and content. Now once our customers figure out how to capture and manage all their content, they're ready to deliver video anytime, anywhere, to many devices. Ensemble Video and Wells will provide reliable streaming and publishing solutions to enable video playback and embedding in LMSs such as Blackboard, Canvas, Moodle, and Brightspace by D2L, among many others. Our content can be embedded in any website, and we also support caption creation and the display of closed captions. I should also note that we do deliver ABR streams, adaptive bitrate streams, to HTML5 players across a variety of devices. Ensemble Video detects the viewer's device and bandwidth in real time, 
and then provides the proper video based on the viewer's available bandwidth. Now, as many of you know, one key component of electric capture system is delivering, uploading, recording, searching, and publishing media in learning management systems. So we're just curious, which learning management system are you using? And we'll keep the poll open for about 15 more seconds. All right, let's close the poll and let's look at the results. So as you can see, um, we have several Moodle and Blackboard attendees here. Um, of course, there's a good percentage using Canvas and Brightspace. And um, as many of you know, the learning management system market is diverse and there are several vendors and players in that game. Uh, so uh, Ensemble Video can be embedded into other learning management systems. Another one that I know is commonly used in our market is Schoology. Now this is just a preview of our easy to use integration inside the LMS. Faculty members can search, upload, record and embed media content in the learning management system. Again, we'll be digging into these integrations later in the live demo. So one of the last decisions that many of you make when looking for a lecture capture system is where do you want all the media hosted? Do you prefer a cloud hosted, self hosted or hybrid hosted deployment? And we'll keep the poll open for another 10 to 15 seconds. All right, let's take a look at the results. So as you can see, there's um, a lot of diversity here. Uh, definitely uh, many people leaning towards the cloud hosted solution. Uh, people are very interested in a hybrid hosted solution, which is the best of both worlds, and we certainly have a uh, large number of attendees looking at a self-hosted solution. So we'll talk more about that as we progress through the webinar. So like our price advantages, the ability to choose from one of these four deployment options allows us to deliver a deployment option tailored to meet your specific needs. Customers choose our cloud-hosted software as a service solution, our self-hosted platform installed behind your firewall, or our hybrid variations of the two. Finally, we do offer a multi-tenant option for consortium partners like a state university network uh, who want to host Ensemble Video in their data center and then provide access to that software, Ensemble Video, for multiple organizations across the consortium. So hopefully the idea is that the state system can reduce duplicate services, duplicate investments, and duplicate efforts. Saving everybody time and money. Now before I forget, please contact me to set up a follow-up conversations and or a demo after this webinar. I'm sure you're going to have questions about our unique price advantages and feature set. Also, I'm happy to discuss your wants and needs, and of course, we can discuss getting you a free Ensemble video trial with a Monarch LCS demo unit and the Wowza streaming engine. My contact information is on the screen. Uh, this will also be sent out uh, in a follow-up email. So we hope the first portion of this webinar has helped you understand how every classroom can be equipped with lecture capture. Ultimately, it comes down to Ensemble Video manufacturing high quality software and offering industrial strength video technologies at the best prices on the market. We offer more lecture capture for less. And as we transition into the live demo, I can encourage you to continue to ask questions. My friends from Wowza, Matrox, and Ensemble will continue to ask questions as we progress through the webinar. All right, so I'm going to log right in here to Ensemble Video. So now we're going to take a look at the Ensemble Video interface. Uh, the, again, Ensemble Video is a web-based app. The idea with Ensemble Video is you can easily organize your entire organization 
inside our web-based app. So going back to a diagram we looked at earlier, you're going to have the ability to manage institutions, organizations, and libraries. So I'm going to log out and make sure that I'm logged in as an administrator. Please keep in mind that you can rebrand all of this so you don't have to have it look like Ensemble Video. You can change all the messaging on the home screen. And when you log in, you're going to be presented with your institution. In this case, you can see if I was managing multiple institutions, I could. So different schools in a state network, for example. You can then manage multiple organizations. Like I said, many schools have a business school, a medical school, or a law school. So here you're going to see if I go look at the law school, what you'll see is I have different course libraries and areas for the law school, whether it's Prosecution 101 or Legal Research course. Now in this case, we're going to be operating mostly in the Ensemble organization, and I'll be playing in one of these libraries, especially the Professor Bryant library. But this is just a good time to take a look and see that you can have a Geology 101 library, a Marketing and Communications library, and of course, Professor Bryant can have his or her own library. Now in the Media Library, you can add videos one by one. This is great for the user-generated content that you want to ensure will deliver to any device. You can record using our screen capture tool, and you can bulk upload content, bulk publish content, bulk automatic caption content. You can also search content, sort content, and visually search content with the auto-generated thumbnails. Okay, so that's just an overview of the media library. Please think of the media library as a folder where all your videos are stored, or a course videos would be stored. Now, we learned a lot about the Matrox Monarch LCS, and we want to see how we register it inside of Ensemble and schedule it. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go into what we call Ensemble Studio Setup. And notice you have the ability to add Monarch HDs, which is a single input appliance, and the LCS, which is the dual video input appliance. Now, I could come into the LCS, associate this with an institution, enter a name, an IP address or host name, a location, provide a description, allow certain IP addresses to access it, and of course I can configure the viewing modes, whether it's picture-in-picture -picture or side-by-side. -side. You can also configure the resolution. Now I'm going to cancel, and we're going to jump into my LCS. So we'll be using the picture-in-picture -picture mode. Now of course you can add many more LCSs, and the first thing I want to talk about here and show you is um, you can set up ad hoc recordings and you can also schedule recordings. So the first thing we're going to do is just give a very quick example of an ad hoc recording. So uh, the, the common use case would be I'm a faculty member, uh, I'm not going to operate on a schedule, I am just going to go into a room and start recording when I am ready. So I can go to the Ensemble Studio activity area and in this case uh, hit the record button and this will start to fire off my recording. So I am going to record. This is going to access my camera and, of course, the usually the computer in the room. And while our recording is started, we're curious. Which is more important, the ability to schedule recordings or enable professors to do an ad hoc recording? And we'll keep the poll open for about 10 more seconds. Got a lot of participation in this poll. This is great. We appreciate that. Let's close the poll and share the results. So as you can see, both uh, giving the ability to schedule recordings and offer ad hoc recordings is really important. And we agree with you 100%. So Ensemble Video, uh, Ensemble Studio, I should say, does support ad hoc recordings and of course scheduled recording. So let's just take a really quick look at the recording here. Okay, as you can see, I was being captured on my video camera and of course uh, my PowerPoint was being captured in the background. Now I can stop this recording when I'm ready, 
and then that video is going to be fed automatically right into my media library. And ideally, we're going to want that video to be automatically published to something like Blackboard, Canvas, Moodle, or Desire to Learn. So let's hit stop here. And again, you can see uh, it's very, very easy to start and stop a recording. It's, it's that easy button. We have one button to turn on and off the recording. And next, what we're going to do is go schedule a recording. So we get that kicked off. So I'm going to go down to administration and go back into studio setup. And let's say I want to start a schedule here. So I want to give you a really good example of the scheduling. Now keep in mind you can also add permissions to the studio device. I'm not going to go too deep into permissions, but if you want certain professors to have access to a device, they can. If you want certain IT professionals to have access to a device, they can. Okay, so there are many different permissions for Ensemble Studio and these devices. Let's go into the scheduling area and let's add a schedule. And I'm just going to name it the scheduled recording example. Our start time will be in four minutes. The end time will be in about nine to ten minutes. I have the ability to say, do I want this to auto record or have it be user controlled? In this case, I want it to auto record. I can then route my recording to a specific library. And that's important because we want to make sure Professor Bryant's recordings go in Professor Bryant's media library. So let's go to Ensemble Organization and then take a quick look and say, let's drop that in Professor Bryant's media library. Now, of course, we've all probably taken classes. Um, many times the classes are scheduled and they're going to recur at the same time during the week. So you can set a recurring recording. All right, in this case, just going to do one. Hit save. And now we go back and look that and see that our scheduled recording is saved. If I go to my Ensemble Studio area, I am in Professor Bryant's media library, and of course my scheduled recording is set up. So the good news is, is we've done an ad hoc recording, which we'll, we should go look at the video on demand file here quickly. And of course, uh, we are setting up a scheduled recording. So let's go take a really quick peek into the media library. And as you can see, um, my recording was published one minute ago. So it was a very short recording, um, but just keep in mind, it's actually streaming and recording at the same time. So your recordings are going to be ready extremely quickly. And the best thing is, as a professor, the end user is going to teach, they're going to walk out of the room, and these videos are going to be published right to the learning management system. So let's go take a look in Blackboard and scroll down to what we call a video playlist, and there is my first recording. Okay, so let's take a quick look here, and you can see my video is accessible right in Blackboard. Now keep in mind we offer multi-speed playback options, so you can do double speed or slow it down a little bit. Now if you wonder if this is working in Moodle, let's refresh my Moodle page. Um, keep in mind I just showed you a video playlist, so that video playlist is a vertical listing of videos. That's one of the layout options. You can search the videos, obviously you can consume the content, whether it's the metadata and thumbnails here. Uh, the showcase is a little bit different layout. These are the same exact videos, um, but you're going to see here that I have my ad hoc capture set up here in Moodle and I have different categories. So the showcase layout is more like a, a simple little YouTube layout embedded right inside of Moodle. This also works in Canvas. This also works in Desire to Learn, Schoology, for example. Okay? So the other piece of the whole lecture capture solution is, all right, we see that we can do ad hoc captures. We can do scheduled captures. Now, um, one of the things we want to figure out is, you know, what else can you do in the LMS? So we can do screen capture. Um, but I want to ask you, and I'm very curious, what video features do you want in your LMS? Or I should say, what video features do the faculty and students want in the LMS? And we're going to keep the poll open for about 15 more seconds.
Getting a lot of great responses here. Keep in mind you can select one or more of the following responses that you see in the poll. And we'll close the poll and let's take a look at the results. And you can see um, uploading video is a key piece of the uh, LMS integration here and I'll show you how to do that in Ensemble. You can certainly insert videos and playlists. We've already seen uh, playlists that have been inserted into Moodle and Blackboard. Um, recording screencasts is very, very important. Uh, we all know that professors do work from home. They're going to work in their offices and they might want to create very short screencasts for their students. And of course, being able to search your metadata is very useful, uh, especially when you think about the number of videos that some faculty members will generate. You're going to want to document and catalog these videos so searching them for future semesters um, is easy. So thank you again for your participation. We're going to take a look at another LMS just to show you how it works in Canvas. Uh, in Canvas you can easily add a page and I'm just going to type in hello world. This will get us exposed to the Ensemble Video LMS integration. Now keep in mind what you're seeing here in Canvas is the same exact interface as you're going to see in Moodle, in Desire Learn by Brightspace. Uh, or Brightspace by Desire to Learn and Blackboard. So here you can see I have uh, my video that was recorded, my ad hoc video. I have other videos so I can embed videos by hitting the add button. I can play videos. I can search my metadata. Again, it becomes very useful when you have several results. And I can record content. Uh, keep in mind you can also add playlists. So if I wanted to embed an entire playlist I could. Uh, let's go into one of those features that you said is critical inside of an LMS. Let's record a little bit of content. So this is our tool called Ensemble Anthem. I'm going to be able to record my screen and voice, screen, voice, and webcam, webcam and voice, or voice. Let's choose the screen, webcam, and voice. You can do full screen or select an area. And what you're going to see here is I can, I'll get my recording countdown, which is going to help me know when to go. Um, I will, it will also fire off my webcam, and you can see with my webcam here that I can expand it, I can move it around, whatever I need to do if I like being down there. I also have the ability to annotate on the screen, so I say, remember, there's our record button. That is where you're going to search. These are Ensemble Video thumbnails. They're automatically generated by Ensemble Video. They also can be uh, customize so you can choose second by second and you can customize your thumbnails. So I'm going to hit stop and done. You're going to notice you have trimming and chopping features on the next screen. And hit done. And this is going to now upload and it's going to be available on Canvas and in Ensemble Video. Okay, so it says our recording has been uploaded successfully. Let's make sure of that. I can come right here and hit refresh and you're going to see that my screen capture example is being embedded as we speak right into Canvas. Now keep in mind this is not stored on Canvas, it's available in Canvas. It is also going to be an Ensemble Video which we'll go back and look at. Uh, but here, you're getting this thumbnail because it's processing. My guess is if I refresh now, we'll have a thumbnail. So I could easily add this here, hit save, hit save and publish. And I will just hit play. Okay, so that's screen capture, and again, you can upload right inside of the LMS, but I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to kind of switch gears. I want to make sure we go back and take a look at the Ensemble Studio activity area. Our scheduled recording example has fired, and it is recording, so it's that set and forget it type method where it starts, it's going to stop, and then it's all automatically going to feed to my LMS. Also, if all goes well, you'll see my screen capture example is here, and of course, my first lecture capture example is here. So those are um, three different ways, the ad hoc capture, the lecture capture, and of course the screen capture where you can provide affordable and reliable lecture capture tools to your users, especially your faculty members. 
Now I want to shift gears a little bit because there's a lot more that Ensemble Video does. Um, one thing we do is we offer what I call sprinkles on the ice cream. Okay, so so streaming video uh, for us uh, was something that we really focused on, you know, 2006 and seven. But we've been really adding on different enhancements to enhance the video experience for your viewers. One thing you can do is add attachments and links to video with metadata. You certainly can add annotations. These are clickable, searchable chapter points. So in this case, I am going to look at and click on study this. So when I click on that, it's going to jump me to one minute in the video, one minute inside the video. So uh, my student can easily say, hey, I know I need to study this. So let's do that. Okay, so you get an idea that I can easily have students jump in and out of video. Uh, you're also seeing the closed captions being displayed, which is a great feature of Ensemble Video. Now I want to go into the search feature. What if you could search every single word inside of a video? And, that, and that's what we're providing here. You can see there's a search window or a search bar here where I can type in the word, let's say, engineer. And now Ensemble Video is telling me, hey, there's six references to engineer. Which one do you want to jump to? Let's jump to the point where this gentleman is talking about the creation of microprocessors, and it takes 500 engineers at least to do that. So that's just an example of some of the enhancements that we're going to add on top of the player. All right. Let's go back to our media library. And you can see our scheduled recording example is being ingested into Ensemble Video as we speak. Um, if you're wondering how some of these things are added or created, uh, there are many different ways and things that you can add to the video. So let's go back to our... Um, screen capture example, let's say. I can go in and edit the screen capture file. Of course, I can add titles, copyright. You can customize the genre. These are some of our metadata is customizable. You can add descriptions and keywords. When I jump in here, there's a few different things we can do. First of all, creating the annotations, extremely simple. The video will play, and then I'm going to type. Now, what's really cool, and the timing worked out really well for us here today, that I actually had this video auto-captioned automatically. So you can see here there's a caption track that was created. Hit enter. So I've added two annotations. Now, that caption track was generated by a built-in auto-captioning service into Ensemble Video. The pricing on that is five cents per minute or less, depending on the amount of hours that you buy through us. So that's another disruptive type service that we're offering where most of the lecture capture, I'm sorry, screen um, captioning options are going to be a dollar um, a minute or, or to over $2 a minute. This is five cents a minute or less. So the caption track was automatically created. Uh, you can obviously submit caption tracks one by one if you want to. I just have it turned on. What if I wanted to edit that caption track? Well, you can go into our caption editor and easily edit a caption track. So you can see this has all been laid out to me by time. And just for a really quick example, I'm going to say hello world, just so you can see it. The uh, caption editor is going to try to teach me how to caption and say, hey, Scott, the line length shouldn't exceed 42 characters. I'm going to ignore that right now, not best practice, just to show you that the very first line of the caption track will say hello world. Let's preview it really quickly. And there's my hello world. Okay, you can also submit to captioning services like 3Play Media, Automatic Sync, CaptionX, and Rev. You also can upload caption files that you've created manually or had somebody create for you. 
So captioning is a really important piece of our solution. And you can see all of these videos that have been created are going through the captioning service. And then finally, uh, one of the other things I mentioned, and I wanted, we're going to um, start to wind this down so we can go through a lot of questions and answers is, well, we want to start to tap into some of the reporting um, on all these videos. So we, we know that we want to figure out you know, what's happening with our video. And, and we're just curious. Um, this is our final poll. What is the most important viewing metric for a lecture capture solution? And we'll leave this open for about 15 to 20 more seconds. All right, we're going to close the poll and share the results here. So as you can see, our attendees do believe that all of, all of these features or metrics are important um, when you're looking at a lecture capture solution. Of course, numbers of views are important. Um, we don't want to invest time, effort, and capital into a solution and then nobody's watching the videos because we all know video takes a lot of time to create no matter how you're creating it. Um, and of course, the length of view is important and who viewed the video is very, very important in some cases. So let's just take a really quick look at what happens uh, inside of Ensemble Video. If I go into an administration, you do not need to be an administrator to view reports. If you're a faculty member, you get your own reports for your own videos. I'll scroll down to reporting. And you're going to see here that I have many different options. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you, because I'm an admin in here, I can go look at different institutions. I can look at different organizations. So if the law school just invested heavily in Ensemble Studio, we can see how much they're storing, how much they're streaming, how much viewership they're getting. And of course, we can look at all libraries in an organization or just Professor Bryant's media library. Now I can change the date range because this is my demo server. I don't have a huge amount of viewership, which is okay. So let's go back a couple years and I'll, let's start to tap into some of these. So one of the um, interesting options is, especially if you have an online learning program, where in the world is your video being viewed? I can tap into, let's say, the U.S. here. I can jump into a specific state and look at certain areas inside of New York State. You also have the ability just to look at what browsers and platforms are accessing your videos. This might be uh, something you want to look at because you want to say, hey, how many views are coming from mobile devices? What about the good old-fashioned popularity contest? What is the most popular video in this library or in this organization? You can see Surgeon Video is the most popular. Um, I can also tap in and drill down into many of these reports. And another very, very popular feature is we can look at the percentage viewed report. So I can tap into a video like Ensemble Studio Sneak Peek, and I can see that it was viewed 59 times. My viewers, actually 10 of them, got to 100% of the video. Another 34 got to about 75%. So this is a really um, very popular report from prospects and customers. And then lastly, I can start to tap into who viewed the video. So in this case, I might want to switch to all libraries and take a look at one of these and see that Scott has watched the video, or Professor Brian has watched the video so many times, and for how long Scott has watched it. So that's just a really quick overview on the reporting and analytics inside of Ensemble Video. To be honest with you, there are hundreds of features inside of Ensemble Video. Um, if you have more questions for specific features that you need me to demo, I think we should set up a demonstration after this call. Um, but this is a time for us to shift gears, and I kind of want to pass the baton to my friend Francesco from Matrox because we've been getting a ton of questions and we want to leave about 10 minutes here to go through um, all of our questions from our attendees. Thanks Scott, good job. Uh, I think the demo was fantastic and for those educational facilities out there really gave 
a good understanding of the benefits of the total package that the ensemble is putting together. So uh, I saw that during the presentation there was a lot of questions that uh, Casey was uh, answering quite well, and uh, I was just answering one myself. So let's uh, let's start looking at some of those questions. One of the questions had to do with the input resolution. So um, does the matrix encoder support two independent HD sources? Short answer is absolutely yes. Uh, long answer is we actually support two combinations of two independent HD sources. That is SDI and HDMI is one combination. So if you have a uh, classroom where your main camera on the presenter would be somewhere tucked away at the back, because of the, the integrity of the signal when you do a long cable run, typically would be SDI. So SDI and HDMI would be the content from the professor. So that combination is covered. And the second is two HDMI sources. So you can have an HDMI camera for, uh, you know, if the budget doesn't um, allow for SDI and uh, an HDMI source from the professor. So uh, I also posted the uh, specific resolutions um, that we support coming into uh, the unit. So that was a, a specific question that also was uh, asked. So I posted that. You can get that from our tech specs because it's quite extensive answer. Um, another uh, frequently asked question that we get is why is a dedicated hardware encoder even necessary for electric capture? And um, the uh, you know there are many reasons you need a dedicated encoder, but one that I like to highlight from the Monarch LCS is our built-in frame synchronizer. You see the computer content and video feeds uh, rarely share the same resolution and frame rate. So what the Monarch LCS does and what this dedicated encoder does, it accepts different feeds and it synchronizes them before the encoding. So you can actually deliver a perfectly timed video and audio um, solution to the viewer. And you don't want to be in a point where you're sending video that's out of sync, talking about, as you can see on slide seven, and you're really on the next one, for example. Um, Another question has to do with the output. So does the encoder actually have a preview output? That's an excellent question because it has to do with the reason why I imagine the, the question is asked is because of the fact that you've got to be conscious about where you live, right? Even though the Monarch LCS should be invisible and will be invisible in most of the classrooms, uh, no one meaning that no one should really feel that it's there. It's just encoding. It wakes up per the schedule and so on. But the point here is that it needs to fit in the classroom without interrupting the workflow. So if you have um, SDI and HDMI um, uh, projectors, if you will, and you need the encoder to feed that uh, just with the content, you can because we have this pass-through that can be fed directly to the projector. So it, it basically doesn't, uh, doesn't interrupt. Another question that came up was, you know, how do you buy or least uh, is it a buy or lease the Monarch LCS? Well, as Scott mentioned, it's quite affordable. It's twenty four ninety five US list, and it um, it is a one time purchase. There is no yearly fee on that hardware. There is no charge on that hardware, dependent on how many students are enrolled in the in the university. Um, it's a one time buy. You have it forever, so it's quite quite aggressive with a, and affordable in terms of its price point. Lastly, um, we get this quite often, with all the hardware encoder choices out there, why the Monarch uh, LCS? That's a great question. I'd like to, you know, even though I'd like to toot my own horn and tell you why the LCS is so great, I think it would be best answered from our partner ensemble, because ultimately what, they're the ones who are putting this package together, overall solution, and ultimately they've made the choice to focus their electric capture on the L L LCS. So. Uh, at this point, I'd like to pass to Scott, and this is a great question to to give him the segue on on tell the folks you know why the LCS. Definitely, thanks, Frank. And um, you know, I think that the answer is pretty simple. I think it's experience, uh, the capabilities of Matrix Video, the affordability of the devices, and of course, their willingness to partner and collaborate. As many of you know, uh, your attendees know, uh, when partners work together, they really truly have to be partners and collaborate and uh, we are very keen on the capabilities of Matrox in terms of their technical expertise and their, again, willingness to collaborate. So it was a simple decision for us 
Of course, there are many options out there, uh, but we have been pleased and so of our customers uh, have been really pleased with the uh, partnership between Ensemble and, and Matrox. And it's very, very similar to the partnership between Wowza and Ensemble. And actually, that takes me to a couple other questions that I um, was I get and I, I did see uh, earlier. Um, one of the questions is, can we record the files to our self-hosted server and then push them to a cloud-hosted environment? So uh, in many cases, you're going to have cloud customers that want to do a lot of recording on campus. Um, and they don't want to be recording and streaming simultaneously to the cloud. They want to record locally and then push to the cloud. And, and yes, yeah, so we have built a remote recorder using Wowza Streaming Engine. Uh, the remote recorder will record the lectures. And on completion, the files will be moved to the cloud, removing the need to have the appliances again to feed the cloud in real time. So that's um, a really important feature that we've added. Um, another question I get a lot is, do you support Wowza's media cache feature? And yes, we do. Um, so we do support Wowza Media Cache setup, whether you're a self-hosted master system or a cloud-hosted uh, master system. So that's possible. And uh, finally, I think uh, one of the things I want to reiterate here is if you're looking at evaluating this and you want to demo or you want to purchase, um, you can contact Ensemble Video. We're a one-stop shop for the solution. Uh, we can work with you on your specific wants and needs to deliver and sell the Matrix devices and, of course, the Wowza streaming engine. So we've been doing this for many years, and, uh, of course, uh, we're willing to work with you on this and uh, dig into your needs through a demo. So um, has anybody, uh, my panelists, seeing any other questions that we should bring up? No, I think that uh, we've covered, uh, hold on, there was one that just came in. Just take a look quickly. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I think that we've covered it pretty well, Scott. Okay. Well, we wanted to thank you for all, all for attending this webinar. Special thanks to my friends from Matrox, Wowza, and of course Casey from Ensemble. A recording of this webinar will be sent to you in the next couple days. In the meantime, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is on screen if you have any questions or if you'd like to schedule a demo or trial. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you, Scott. Thank you.